What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Energy Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we don't have to uh, speculate or theorize uh, of what on what the DCU is going to be trying to do in the next five to ten years, or whatever, uh, with regards to Superman and Henry Cavill. Now we have confirmation. Um, and Brian, I like the way James Gunn has been doing this thing, man. I ain't going front the way he's handling this and answering questions from the actual fans, pertinent questions, important questions. He's definitely, uh, having a conversation and keeping us in the know as to what's true and what's not true. Brian, um, I feel bad for Mr. Henry Cap. That's one thing. Um, but what are your thoughts? What did you immediately think after hearing that Henry Cavill is no longer going to be Superman and what we have in store for the rest of the DCU? Well, this is a great bookend to this kind of recent series of shows that we've been doing, sort of the WTF Superman, even dating back to would Henry Cavill be in Black Adam, which he ultimately was. We've been talking about this story for a long time. And you and I, we have put this out to the people that if Henry Cavill was going to lose his job as Superman, what was the most likely reason for that to occur? It was mm -hmm. age. And that, in the end, was what caused the change. We could speculate about politics and everything else, but at the end of the day, James Gunn, drew a line in the sand and said we're going young and because we're going young no henry cavill at age 40. and that's mm. exactly what you and i had talked about which is it's a 10-year plan this is not about what henry cavill can do today it's a vision of what he has to be able to do over a decade and quite honestly longer than that because we know things get delayed things take longer you have to be able to you have to pull off what hugh jackman did and Superman's harder to do that. This is a character yeah. that doesn't age, really. Yeah. So he has to look the same, quite honestly, at the end of his journey that he did at the beginning. Yeah. Unless you do what Gunn is, seems to be doing, which is make him a younger character who's sort of growing into the role. And that's just, there's nothing, you know, Henry Cavill can't defeat Father Time. There's, there's just <laughs> nothing he and can Brian, do And Brian, you and I discussed the possibility we were given it a chance of Henry Cavill coming back and if they if they decided to do an Elseworld sort of storyline with with Henry Cavill and unfortunately they're just not thinking about that you know they're not they're trying to do their own thing um respecting the successes they've gotten already with the Batman and the Joker we're not touching those those made a hell of a lot of money people like it let's keep that going but we're doing this we don't have time to focus on other stuff. Although, Brian, you and I have talked about it. I, even though it's supposedly untouched, I don't think that J.J. Abrams, Tanahasi Coast thing gets done. And if, I, and if they do go through with it, Brian, I, this could either be a disaster or overwhelming success. Your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, let's do deal with that and then, then come back to it. So we've got a variety article, which I recommend you checking out. It, it, it's what confirmed this story, which then was confirmed by Gunn himself and Henry Cavill. But it did include that nugget of the J.J. Abrams Tanahasi Coach project is still in development. I call him BS on that. I think this is quite honestly just a little bit of a function of WB took a lot of heat for the projects they canceled. People are represent, you know, the representation that they eliminated from their streaming service and their film lineup. And, you know, Ta-Nehisi Coates, his stature as a writer is what it is. I think they're kind of letting that one down easy and quietly. I just don't think they want to admit that they're, yeah. because you, you know, listen, I, he's a brilliant writer, but you can't on the one hand say, we're trying to clean up the universe and have one version of each of these characters and then immediately come back around with, we got a Caucasian Superman and a black Superman. You can't, I'm just, I, you, those two things just don't fit yeah. in the same sandbox. And yeah. so 
I just don't see you have to make a choice, right? And clearly what we're seeing is James Gunn and Peter Saffron are making some hard choices, right? They, they, that's the thing. Like I gave respect. We talked about who was calling the shots. I mean, James Gunn, he's not walking around with a pop gun, man. He's walking around with like the BFG from the <laughs> old boom guns. Like that's what he's firing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's that that's there's just no way I can see that project ultimately making the finish line. I think they're just being very politically correct right now about what they say about it. Yeah. Um Quote, though, want to bring it back to the gun yep. quote. Let's build on that for Superman. Mm -hmm. James Gunn, among those, talking about the DC projects, on the slate is Superman. In the initial stages, our story will be focusing on an early part of Superman's life, so the character will not be played by Henry Cavill. But we just had a great meeting with Henry. We're big fans, and we talked about a number of exciting possibilities to work together in the future. End quote. What yeah. do you, how do you react? We speculated younger Superman. This actually sounds maybe even a stage younger than you and I were thinking, but what do you think about that? So you know, Superman, maybe I guess in his 20s, that that was sort of my interpretation. Like, it doesn't sound like it would be like Smallville days, like high school, but it sounds like first couple of years, maybe as Superman. Yes, I think is, uh, I think on the John Campus show, or some other show, I forget, um, were comparing it to Batman year two. This would be Superman's year two or three as being this guy out there flying, saving people. So that's interesting to me. Um, what were your thoughts when you, did, were you excited about the possibilities of that telling that story? Cause we haven't really seen anything other than what we saw with Christopher Reeve him. And then it was just, everything else was pretty much derivative and henry cavill's thing was separate um but your your thoughts on this uh, on his idea yeah so I, it's interesting to take that historical perspective because reeve christopher reeve was fully formed when he was unveiled right this was he was sort of like a it really, really wasn't an aged story it just was he revealed himself and he was fully grown yeah um brandon routh same thing that was he was gone for five years after superman 2 so even though he looked younger he was actually older yeah. uh, than the christopher reeve interpretation now cavill we got to see like a, a maturation but he wasn't young I, I never got the sense that like we were flashing back to smallville days that felt like a long time before what we were seeing like martha kent was pretty old when yeah. he was flying around even though he was new to the suit yeah. so that kind of like mixed the timelines yeah, right now, the I mean, the closest we've ever gotten to this, quite honestly, is the Tom Welling kind of like later seasons of Smallville, which that's not even fair to like put in the equation here because yeah. that show was meant to do different things. But that was the only attempt to show like Superman go moving to Metropolis and like putting on early versions of a suit that really wasn't the suit and that sort of thing. So you're right. This thing is at an interesting time of his life. And I want to float something to you. Okay. Do you think it so you you immediately hit a hit on the the Batman parallels? I know they're saying the Matt Reeves universe is separate and untouchable, but do you think it's a coincidence that our Superman is now going to be perfectly aligned age and experience wise with the R Pat's Batman? Do you think that's a hedge to maybe someday see if they could convince Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson to join? the broader vision for the universe. Brian, I said several years ago that the Batman perhaps may be the spark of something new. This just tells me that perhaps Matt Reeves, James Gunn have been talking. Why wouldn't they talk? And perhaps setting the stage for the possibilities, because again, we have to see Matt Reeves' story play out. Then we can talk what else. Because if the Batman stuff is successful and this Superman thing is successful, Brian, all it is is numbers after that. And you have two actors in theory who will be contemporaries, two characters who will be at the exact same stage of development. I don't think it's an accident. I think they are hedging 100% to leave the door open to cross these characters over, especially given, look, I mean, as you said, of course they're talking. And this, you know, it took a three-hour origin movie that was 
ultra dark and made $800 million with it out of the gate, they'd be stupid not to try to like bring them into the fold. Now you don't want to mess with Matt Reeves, but I think Gunn has probably left it diplomatically. Like let's just keep the door open. Yeah. And if that doesn't happen, Brian, what do you do with Batman? Well, then you're going to need another Batman. I've already said it. You already heard me say it, Brian. Alan Richardson is perfect for it. If you watch Blue Mountain State, he can be Bruce Wayne. He can be the arrogant, funny, and then he can switch over to that. That is easy, Brian. Six foot five. We don't have to worry about, is he in shape? We just have to worry about finding a Superman that's actually can stand up to him because he looks physically like the way Superman's supposed to. But Brian, does he really have to be as big, Brian? I think we already look. We already saw what a we can't. I don't think a more muscular Superman than Harry, what, what Heavy Cavill was, is the answer. No, or equivalent want, to. I don't think you want Batman to be six inches taller than Superman, though. I mean, well, six, you, five, what was that dude's name? Um, that you, the Australian actor that's six oh, he, five. Yeah, that's J- Jacob Elordi. He's six five and he's twenty five. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll 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 be putting his name in the ether for a couple. <laughs> of years. Maybe this is it. Look, I I agree. I think they will they they'll, they'll do one more Batman because you can't have a Justice League universe that doesn't have Batman. That just won't work. But I think Gunn is betting that he could convince Reeves over the long run that he can get him on board. I think yeah. that's the plan. Mm. What do you think of Gunn writing? So that was the other big thing. He is writing the script. He's not directing the film, but he's writing the Superman script. What do you think about that? My hope, Brian, is that he says what he's, that he does what he said he was going to do. Is focus on the characters and who these characters are. Not make this a whole goofy scenario. You can't go there. We go there. You're going to lose. I'm, I'm, you're going to make it... Uh, Let's not get it twisted. James Gunn is, is a fantastic director. He's very artistic in, 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 in his uh, visualization and storytelling. But in terms of the dialogue sometimes and the, the comedy aspects of it, to me, it's just not funny. And there are a lot of people that feel that way. And I think you want to give us a, 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 a story that can get the majority out of that majority of people. I mean, hey, listen, Avatar is coming out. Get some inspiration from that, man. Because Superman has to be. Every time I'm telling you, every time I watch Christopher Reeves, it's that you get that feeling that, that uh, f- for the first time. And I think you got to get back to that because that's what Superman sort of emotes. You do, but it's like you got to do it in a way that's not fully realized, right? Because this, if it's young Superman, you have to, it's like you have to see the flashes of greatness. Yes. I don't think you can expect a 23-year-old Superman to be what Christopher Reeve was. That's your mm. end game. Yes, yes. So you need, you know, and that's where I go back to, like, I'll be curious to see how dramatic Gunn goes with this. We we know the di- the dialogue will be snappy. We know that there will be humor because that's he can't do anything without that. Mm-hmm. But I would be shocked if he if he's keeping the tone anywhere near what we saw in Guardians or Suicide Squad or Peacemaker. Like it's just not appropriate. That's what I'm for saying. The story of, of Superman. So that will be the challenge for Gunn. I think the fact that he's not doing the directing, which he can't really, if he's going to be this DC Maven, yeah, leaves the door open. And I, I mean, I've been pitching Joe Kaczynski, but that's my guy. Like I think if you want. If you want the visuals to look top-notch but original and practical, and I think fresh off of having seen you know, what he did with the emotional side of Top Gun Maverick in directing actors of all ages, quite frankly, I mean, young pilots up to you know, Tom Cruise, yeah. that's the guy that I'd be... And a guy who's shown that he is perfectly happy to direct someone else's script and have no hand in the writing, yeah. that's the guy I'm calling to work on a gun script and see if we can turn this into something, something epic. Um, Damn. But I think it does underscore how important the project is because right out of the gate, guns running the universe and he's like, ah, I'm writing this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, I like the way James, James Gunn is taking control of the situation. Like that's it. We're, we're starting from scratch. 
and Superman is needs to be established and it needs to be successful and I am going to take control and make sure that is the case he's going to take a chance he's going to risk a lot Brian because Superman isn't easy but it can be done it can be done I think it it also other clues we're getting these are not surprises but younger Superman also tells me it's an earthbound story like we're not going cosmic which is I mean, I've argued like Exile is a great storyline, but I would not be leading off with that. Yeah. It's a totally different type of thing. So definitely getting an Earthbound story. I'm also fascinated. What does that mean for the other characters? I mean, presumably that means Lois is now younger. Let me say this, Brian. Is Lana still around? Do we get Pete Ross? Do we get, is Lex younger? Like that, I think that's, these are all really interesting, you know, rabbit holes that we could be going down listen for me they they should stay away from the lois and superman sure it gotta feel like remember tony danza and 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 who's the boss the tension gotta (laughs) be there you know what i'm saying they work together you you know what i'm saying they have that that chemistry we need to see that not the way they've done it so far like this dude is only saving lois lane how many times did he save this girl yeah exactly. it, it can't be that um Lex Luthor Brian I think perfect the perfect cast for this guy is the guy from Lovecraft Country he would be perfect bald and he would be dating Lois Lane you got to throw in that dynamic that works yes I mean that definitely works like I think the soup that's the thing is like by doing it younger you know and and Smallville did this for a while. They made Lana the primary object of affection for the first half of that show. They introduced Lois as a character, but they didn't really start that path yeah. until the last. I think that's fine. You, yeah. you just have them in the world, but they don't have to be exactly. going on the flight, you know, the night flight over the city. They don't have to do that in the first yeah. movie. Now, I did want to turn this the other way. So you 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 talked about feeling for Henry Cavill. That, mm-hmm, listen, mm-hmm, Pablo, mm-hmm. There's, there's L's and then there's this. I mean... This is a heart getting ripped out. I mean, I look a couple like I'm just saying like we six months ago, there's a world where in 2023, Henry Cavill is Superman, the Witcher and James Bond. And he got none of that. Wow. Right. It, you got all these options and, and, and you could have either one of them would have gotten you. Uh, you would have had continued success and now you have nothing. That's it's that's that's that's, not. that's a tough conversation. Imagine him feeling like it's like yo going in there, you're not knowing if you're gonna get fired or not, or, or telling you don't got the job. It, it, it sucks for a job that he really wanted and wanted a second chance at trying to make it great. Um, unfortunately, yo, it's the chance you took playing around with the rock. Yeah, there's definitely an air of overreach and kind of big time and things and hitching your wagon to the wrong camp at the wrong time. And I do think with the age thing, I mean, that kind of, you know, probably ended the dream, but yeah, this will be one of those, I think we're going to look back and this will be one of those, like what might have been careers. Yeah. Cause we said that with this guy, like he's, he's, he's better at being famous than he's been at being an actual movie star. And like, Absolutely. this 100%. just is the exclamation point on yeah. that. It's- it's crazy. Like this guy is so demand, but he can't land a, a big role. Uh, the guy's name is Jordan Patrick Smith. Yeah. Okay. That guy would be perfect as Lex Luthor. Um, only thirty-three, Scottish actor. There you go. That would be probably in the age range. That would be okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I mean, the, the Cavill situation. I did want to just. This, so the Cavill situation, I think, has a couple subplots. So let yeah. me read his statement. On mm-hmm. this. He was diplomatic, but he was very final. In the this. pro. He's the pro. I have just had, quote, I have just had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Saffron, and it's sad news, everyone. I will, after all, not be returning as Superman. After being told by the studio to announce my return back in October, mm. hold, that, hold that thought, prior to their hire, meaning Gunn and Saffron, this news isn't the easiest. But that's life. The car- uh, Then he says, the changing of the guard is something that happens. I respect that. I wish them and all involved with the new universe the best of luck and the happiest of fortunes. And then he said, Superman is still around. Everything he stands for still exists. And the examples he sets for us are still there. 
my turn to wear the cape has passed but what superman stands for never will it's been a fun ride with you all onwards and upwards Paulo, he's not he's not doing this in any capacity he's out out he's done he's done and that to me is shots fired at black adam because that tells me black adam 2 is done and not happening yeah yeah what am i missing here like (laughs) do you think the rock is trying to get on the phone with james gunn no i actually don't do you think the Rock is going to say something within the next two weeks or after the New Year's? Yes. After think, the New Year's? I think, no, I think he's going to go. I think he's going to go scorched earth or passive or super passive aggressive about this, similar to what he did in the feud with Vin Diesel. When out of nowhere, without wow. naming him, made it clear on the Fast and Furious set that there were people he liked. And people he couldn't stand to work with. And everyone knew who he was talking about, even though he wouldn't say it. When you look at what he was saying about WB and Henry Cavill prior to this, where he was like, it was inexplicable and irresponsible. They never brought him back. And we wouldn't take no for an answer. And this is the greatest Superman. And this is the only Superman. You think he's going to just let this slide with no clap back? Yeah. This is a dude who wouldn't let comments about the profitability of Black Adam slide. You think he's going to let this slide? If if Gunn's comment was the only one we had, you'd still have the universe hoping that Henry Cavill would last as like the Black Adam versus Superman. But when Cavill comes out and tells you in no uncertain terms, he is not wearing the cape in any capacity ever again, that tells you there's no path for him to do that in the Black Adam franchise. And to me... If there's no Superman in the Black Adam franchise, there's no Black Adam franchise because Dwayne Johnson's whole objective has been Most to get Superman, Superman again. Yeah. So there, that's why I think like this is a very like James Gunn is being very. He still has not invoked the Rock's name at any point. He's being very tactical, but giving you additional information. <laughs> oh man, I just think, as I said, I think James Gunn's position is, you know. Look at that last quote he had about Cavill. We're big fans. We had a great meeting. We're talking about all these things we can do together in the future. Yeah, whatever. I mean, that's like very politically correct and diplomatic. Mm -hmm. James Gunn will say at some point, I'm sure, I'm a huge fan of Black Adam. Like Dwayne Johnson is one of the, you know, most beloved celebrities on the planet. And, you know, if he ever wants to be, you know, part of our lineup for the future, we'd love to have him back. That's what the, that's what the company line is going to be. And you just know that Rock's like, no. I, I, I am too big. I'm not going to stand in a lineup with seven other Justice Leaguers. No, not a chance. I will go do my sequels and my reboots <laughs> and my remakes and keep my machine running. I am rooting for DC more than ever now. I want DC even more now to succeed. Although I have not really taking to some of Gunn's uh, films. First Guardians, I completely enjoyed the first Guardian and his direction with the Guardians of the Galaxy. But the the Guardians of the Galaxy, there were some things too that, uh, that were great as well. I just haven't fully embraced his humor in some of these films and therefore I haven't enjoyed a Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, but he's a creative guy. And um, the hope is that, like he says, he treats these characters as they should be treated. Um, and, and he do he does them justice and these storylines justice. Let's see it. Um, so I'm giving him the chance to, 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 you know, let's see what you got. Well, I mean, this is this is also this is also a classic case of betting on yourself because yeah. if you are, if, you know, this would be the equivalent of like Kevin Feige saying like I'm going to write Iron Man in 2007. It's like you're yeah. the head of this endeavor. You ain't going to get to Avengers if Iron Man fails, right? So, like, and I respect that, thing. right? So, like, Gunn is like he's putting it on the line. He's got four years. This is a great way to be like to put up or shut up. Now, one other nugget that this Variety article threw in. That is mm-hmm. worth some real discussion here. 
Ben Affleck, but not as Batman. Being courted to just be the director, director yes. of an upcoming DC project. What do you think about that? I'm excited for it because I think Ben Affleck as a director is fantastic. Originally, when he was supposed to direct a Batman film, I was very excited to see what that would look like. So if it's... I don't think I don't I don't know what's happening with the Batman world. I don't know if Ben Affleck is is interested in doing that again or revisiting that 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 role as a director for that character. I don't know what other character he would direct. There's probably uh, I'm sure Tracy would say the Grifter. This there's, there's there's some characters in there, some serious characters that he can take on. So it's just a wait and see. I I'm sure um that whatever character they choose or project that they choose to do i think um it'll be a very anticipated film um if he directs it i agree I, you know it's funny i think the world has forgotten how good of a director ben affleck was regarded as a decade ago i mean this is a guy who um you know had a run of sort of gone baby gone the town Argo Argo like this guy was on the top shelf and he quite honestly just hasn't done a lot of direct he's just chosen not to direct a ton in the past 10 years mm -hmm. but he is also um he's also like a comics junkie I think that's something that people don't like this is a guy who's incredibly knowledgeable like when he came into the bat verse and was courted to do that this was not someone who came in blind he came in with a real view of the comics of the characters and what he wanted to do so yeah we're also gonna you know you'll get your it sounds like if we do get the flash flash movie to come out like you'll get your swan song of him in the cape and cow but i thought this was actually like a pretty significant development where i was like oh that's kind of smart like let's not have him overreach let's not have him revisit territory he's been before let's just have him go back to some of the things he was really really good at 10 years ago mm -hmm. so yeah i'm excited about that yeah, a lot of stuff is happening in DC. Anything else, Brian, before we move on? No, I mean, I think that's, I think the last thing that you, is what you started with is like, James Gunn is, he he is online every day. And I, I really, you know, I think I knew it's what he would do, but he's probably even exceeded my expectations. He's pulling individual articles and giving you, well, that's not true. That's sort of true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> he understands I think what it shows is he understands the fandom. He understands what this genre creates in terms of these rumor mills and hype trains. Yeah. And so he's very smartly kind of diffusing some things, letting some things grow. But he knew the Superman issue was a huge elephant in the room. So he, he took came care out, of it right away. He came out and took care of it. And I think that's for Warner Brothers and DC in the long run, that, that can only pay dividends with where they've been. I think what it also does in him responding in this way, Brian, is it is that it uh, um, curbs your expectations so that your speculation or theories don't go wild. So that when you see this movie, you're not disappointed in that your theory um, was either wrong or right, whatever the case may be. So I'm hoping, Brian, that this... Uh, journey gets us in a place where we are satisfied um and give us that listen let's call it what it is that mcu feeling watching endgame infinity war no way home that cheering in the theaters i want to get back to that because that's yeah. where it's at because we i mean basically we have a transition year of films that are in the can we hope i mean all Ezra Miller controversy aside, everything we hear about Fla The Flash is that it's awesome. So we hope it's a good film, if nothing else, because I don't think we have a ton of optimism for Aquaman 2. And Shazam 2, whether it's good or whether it's not, just isn't impactful enough to kind of leave a lasting impression. So we kind of have a lost 2023. And even, even The Flash, like I think the issue with The Flash is even if it's great, you know that they're recasting the flash after so it, it, you, they're kind of rebooting that anyway so it's like you're just getting this year of three movies that don't really go anywhere further mm. but if we can get to get superman right in 24 and we get 
the Batman sequel in 25. I mean, that's where it's at. Like if we if we're if we leave those two years with those two characters in good shape, sky's the limit. Yeah. And we'll be hearing soon, Brian, on what the plan is in the next few months. Very exciting. Very exciting. I'm not going to lie. Um, very curious uh, and interested. In, and, and I'm very hopeful, man, because this is what, this is the sort of attention that I think these this IP needs. Not execs looking at dollar signs. Um, certainly they're looking at dollar signs as well in this situation, but I think the focus is making these, uh, characters who they need to be and, and represented correctly for those dollars to come in. Cause if you do that, right, those dollars are going to come just pour in. Well, it's a great point. I mean, I think one of the things we, we saw doom black Adam was it was budgeted incorrectly. That should not have been a $200 million budgeted film. So that's why the movie, like, contrary to The Rock's BS math, and it is fake math that he put out there, this movie's going to lose money. I think Warner Brothers will confirm that on their next earnings call. But we've seen in the past, like, the Batman, the budget was considerably lower for that than what Chris Nolan had to work with for The Dark Knight Rises. That makes sense. It's mm. the start of something. Yeah. You, you don't set up movie. the way to set up movies to fail is by giving them 250 million dollars out of the gate because now they have to make 600 700 and if the audience doesn't receive it that way you're dead in the wall john carter exactly <laughs> those movies the hit rates have been terrible yeah right unless it's unless james cameron is your director like he's the only guy that can do it <laughs> and he's gonna do it again basically what, what i'm seeing he's gonna pull yeah, this off again yeah but yeah there's nothing i mean you can budget Superman at 150. And if it's a younger Superman, a character driven Superman, great. As you said, we don't need 45 minutes of him flying around doing super powered stuff. We want to care about the characters. Having said that, Brian, what do you expect from this younger Superman? What do you expect his ordeal to be in this film? What do you expect for us to discover in this uh, onset of Superman? I think actually the story is going to be propelled by the journalism. That's my guess. I think the way the narrative is going to work is Clark Kent as reporter, exploring the city, exploring the world, and through that lens, struggling with how to deploy his powers in the best possible way. That, I think, in a nutshell, is movie one. Yeah. The Nerd Jeff Report, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, like the, the way I titled my uh, Andor, our Andor uh, show, if you ain't watching, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. Affleck was regarded as a decade ago. I mean, this is a guy who, um, you know, had a run of sort of gone baby. <laughs>